In the pre-1800s, the one-room schoolhouse had limited organizational complexity. There was direct connection that the leaders had to the community in which they served, though there were a few national or state mandates to follow, such as no academic standards, no core curriculum, grades, attendance norms, or even job descriptions. There was great independence for school leaders to carry out the vision for their school. But the leaders were also limited to the foibles of variables of community resources and shifting public opinion, which changed greatly depending upon where in the country the principal happened to be stationed. Leadership in the community came in the form of local school boards, and these people were selected based upon their moral character or strong community relationships. Once we get to the 1800s, we see a collection of key dates. A few points to to note here, in 1812, the first superintendent in New York was the person to develop a plan for common schools. This person, usually always he, also was assigned the duties of reporting on the management of public funds and providing information to, say, to the state legislature. We also note here the Association of Secondary School Principals in 1916 and the Association of Elementary School Principals in 1921. The first was founded to engage and connect school leaders. The second, specifically focusing on raising the standard of services that could be provided through training opportunities and working with young children. This time is key with one central idea. The key idea, centralize. Centralizing of schools in the common school movement. These ideas were under Horace Mann's concept that the school was a right of a human being. It was a national responsibility. We see that continue today. Education is a necessity. Take even the 2002 No Child Left Behind Act or the 2015 Every Student Succeeds Act. This was the first time that we see the involvement of the national government in education. It was under this idea that education should be centralized, that the elite, meaning the political, the educated, the influential, and at the time, actually the landowners, they were the driving force behind reforms. They believed in centralization, the elite are the best ones to make decisions for the nation.